I want to share with you my testimony of getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving the gift of tongues. And I believe this is going to help some of you. I know that there are many of you that hunger to receive this gift. And as believers in Jesus, it's absolutely for you. So about 19 years ago, I got saved. And I would say somewhere around 17 years ago is when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now I got radically saved. I started going to a pretty decent church. And when I was saved initially, the Holy Spirit actually introduced himself to me. But as I journeyed on that first year or so of my salvation, I never knew who he was. I'd never heard a teaching on him. No one had ever spoken about him. And so I'd always had this curiosity in my heart. And so one day I was exposed to this series of teachings on the topic of the Holy Spirit. So I bought the entire CDs series. I wanted to know who is this Holy Spirit? Because I know he told me his name on the day I got saved. So I did the entire thing. I learned all about the person of the Holy Spirit. And then they proceeded to teach on this aspect of the Spirit, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Whereas believers in Jesus, we can receive this empowerment from the Spirit to be witnesses for Christ. And with that, we can receive a gift where we can pray in an unknown language to us, a language that is not naturally learned. This is a supernatural endowment by the Spirit, a supernatural ability given to us by the Spirit with incredible purpose, right? So I learned all about that. At the very end of the series, the preacher prayed that we would receive it. And so I prayed along while I listened to the audio and um, nothing happened. So I'm kind of going on with life. And shortly after one day, I'm on that pastor's church's website. And they had in their menu section an area called pastoral frequently asked questions. And one of the topics was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And because I was still very curious and I didn't really still understand it, I wanted to see what they were saying. So I started to read what was on there and I got to a certain point where all of the sudden the Holy Spirit literally overtakes me. I say it, it's as if he fell upon me. Yes, I have the spirit indwelling me because of my salvation, but this was a unique experience. I literally felt the spirit of God come over me and upon me. And all of a sudden tongues shot out of my mouth like a machine gun, literally like with so much force. And it was coming out so fast that I literally remember with my eyes looking down towards my mouth, almost as if I could see what was happening. <laughs> But just out of utter shock and amazement of what is coming out of my mouth right now. I knew that it was tongues and all of a sudden I just shut my mouth. I just stopped because the Holy Spirit didn't possess me. He didn't control me apart from my own ability to control myself. He did overtake me and tongues came out, but I was able to stop it. And so once I stopped it, immediately a thought comes into my mind and says, what you're doing right now, this is not real. And I look back on the computer screen to continue reading where I had left off and literally the very next words where I had left off said this, the first thing that the devil is going to tell you is that this is not real. And I was like, wow. Like I couldn't believe it. Not, not only the supernatural experience of what just happened, but literally the first thing that came into my mind when I stopped praying was that this is not real. And the next thing that was spoken about on that computer screen was God using that website to tell me the first thing the devil's going to do is tell you that this is not real. And it was amazing because I didn't have a person there who could counsel me and give me wisdom, which is a great thing to have, but the Holy Spirit did it. He set this up in such a way that the enemy would not come in and do what he normally does. Just like it says, this is the enemy has nothing new under the sun. He has the same tactics. He has the same lies. He, and, and, and he fights against tongues because it is a powerful weapon. It is a powerful vehicle of prayer that that the enemy hates. And that just solidified it in my heart. And let me tell you from that day, everything began to change. Literally, I experienced a power in me that I did not have prior to that. Was I already in love with Jesus? Yes. Was I already hungry for the things of God? Yes. But I was going after it with all of my strength and I sincerely 
I'm telling you the truth. I felt like now I was able to go after things with a strength and a grit and a power that I just didn't have before. And I started making radical decisions, major sacrifices to begin to change my life. And so that became a pivotal moment in my life as a believer. Also to add to it, the Lord shortly after reminded me of something that had happened previously probably within the like year prior to that experience. Well, this is at the point where I know nothing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or tongues at all. And one day at this church that I'm at, I see this, this invitation to intercessory prayer. And I'm like, okay, I want to go. I, you know, prayer, I'm hungry for God. I, I don't know what it is, but I want to be there. So I get to the church, I pull up, I begin to walk in and I realize, oh my gosh, this place is packed. They're having an event. And so what would happen is that church very often would rent out its sanctuary so that people could host like events and things inside of it. So it was someone else's event going on in there. So I felt really intimidated because I didn't know where to go. And to be honest, I had no clue how to say that word in accessory. I had read it, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. So I was very embarrassed to ask for help. So I kind of went inside, looked around and was like, you know what, forget it. I'll try this another time. Turn around and walk out the door. And I'm not kidding you, about three steps out the door, I hear the voice of God almost as if it was audible, but I don't believe that it was. But it was that loud and that precise. And it said, turn around and go back. And I stopped dead in my tracks and was just like, God, (laughs) <laughs> you know, like that was God. Like, I don't yet know the voice of the Lord like that. I'm growing in my intimacy, but that was God. There's no question about it. And so I literally turned around and went back, started talking to a lady, trying to explain to her what it is. She finally figures out the word that I can't communicate. <laughs> and so she directs me and I come into this tiny little room. There was probably eight or 10 people. And we gathered around in a circle while all sitting on our knees And then the time of prayer began. I would guess that it went on for about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, I can't remember 100%. And they all were praying in tongues. Now, while that was happening, I obviously was not praying along. And I didn't really know what was going on. I had no idea. I'd never heard a tongue. So I didn't even know that's what they were doing. But I will tell you this. This is something that's amazing. Even though I had no clue what was going on, nobody informed me. I'd never had biblical knowledge of this. I didn't feel weird. Nothing in my spirit went off as like a red flag, like you need to get out. This is bizarre. This is weird. This is not okay. Like I literally had so much peace in that room. I felt totally content. I just didn't understand what they were doing or why I was there. (laughs) Right? Like, God, why did you tell me to come back? Like, I don't really know what we're doing here, but okay. You know, like I just sat there the entire time. And once they were done, they all were very sweet. They said bye. And I left and I was just like, that was very interesting, God. That was a time of prayer, but I don't really know what they were praying or what they were doing. But what I did know is God wanted me in that room and that I had total peace with whatever was happening there. Like the witness in my spirit was totally at rest. And so life goes on. Now, fast forward to me now getting baptized in the spirit. Shortly after that, the Lord reminds me, of that time he told me to go back in the room and what I what I realized what God was doing and what I believe he showed me was that he called me back in that room that day because at that moment it didn't have great significance but he was actually building um, a witness to the baptism of the Holy Spirit for me you know how the scriptures many many times Old Testament to New Testament the Lord will confirm his word with supernatural science, right? You know, let things be established from the mouth of two or three witnesses. There's lots of things from Old Testament to New Testament that show that this is something God does a lot. And I believe because of, which I didn't know yet at that time, but because of the call to be a preacher and a teacher, which is a part of my call, this was something that the Lord wanted to really solidify in me and have a very strong witness so that when the days would come when I would be challenged with people that deal with religious spirits and spirits of unbelief and they are fierce and they are um, aggressive, that I would have such a resolve in my spirit about this that I would never be moved. I would be unshakable in my conviction about this. I had no idea what the Lord was building, but I also look back and realize in my life, there's actually a lot of areas that now that I'm further in my walk with God, I realize, wow, there is a lot of unbelieving believers in the body of Christ that really don't believe God heals, don't believe that God that's speaking in tongues is legitimate, at least is far as it being this unknown language. But you see, God has already shown me so much. He showed me so much before I was 
really exposed to it in the culture of Christianity or whatever. And because of that, it has taken my faith in these things to a whole nother level. And again, we should believe simply because of the word, but then after we experience the reality of the word, it further solidifies the truth of the scriptures in our heart, right? And it makes us immovable in our conviction of these things. And so that's where I'm at with this. I already know I've experienced it. I see it in the scriptures. And now the fruit of praying in the spirit for 17 ish years, I have had nothing but incredible things happen because I pray in the spirit. And yes, and when I say that, once again, I'm talking about praying in a language that is not known to you. First Corinthians 14, two, we are speaking mysteries in the spirit. We're not speaking to people. We're speaking to God, at least in this realm of tongues. There are three different biblical uses of tongues, and I have teachings on my channel that will teach you about each one. But this is the personal prayer language that every believer can receive if they so desire. And it is that right there where you talk to God, no one is meant to understand you, therefore no one will understand you, but you are speaking to God and he understands you and the spirit is making intercession through you, praying the perfect will of God and simultaneously you are literally receiving spiritual strength and making spiritual progress and being empowered by God's spirit, which literally flows into everything that your life is connected to. I'm telling you, this is truth. This is truth and this is fact. It's truth because the Bible says it, but it's also a reality because I've also now experienced it. And so I say these things to testify, to help you that may be in positions where you're just struggling to believe or struggling to receive. And I want you to know that this is for you. It's absolutely for you. Luke 11 verse 13, but we can even go back starting at verse 11. When you ask, you will receive. When you seek, you will find. When you knock, the door will be opened. If our child comes to us asking us for bread, we're not going to give him a rock. If our child comes to us asking us for fish, we're not going to give him a snake. If he asks for an egg, we're not going to give him a scorpion. So if we, being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father, who is purely good, give His Holy Spirit to those who ask? And I will say the number one key to receiving the baptism of the Spirit and the gift of praying in tongues is truly childlikeness. It's just a, a simplicity of faith that says, God said it. He's my Father. I know that, he that He's good. And when I ask Him for something, he will do it because it's in alignment with his will. And so I don't have to overcomplicate it. And therefore I'm going to open my mouth and by faith, as I pray to receive the baptism of the spirit, then I will open my mouth and Holy Spirit will begin to fill my mouth with these words that I will not understand. And that's why they will seem foreign to you because they are foreign to you because they are not anything that you naturally know. It is a supernatural experience that is happening to you. And truly it's received by those with childlike faith. So I wasn't planning on do this, but I feel prompted to do this. So I wanna pray for you right now. If you are a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, and you wanna receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is talked about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that when Jesus would come, he would baptize his followers with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This is talked about in Luke, in Acts, that this is the promise of the Father, that they were to wait upon the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses for Christ, and to be able to be emboldened to preach the gospel, demonstrate the reality of the kingdom through signs, wonders, and miracles, and to live a holy set apart life for Jesus, no matter what the cost is. If you want to receive that power empowerment, if you want to receive this gift of tongues that I've already mentioned is for you so that you can pray in your prayer closet anytime, any day, and know that you're praying the perfect will of God and have a weapon, a way of empowering yourself. When you need spiritual empowerment, you can go and access that all by yourself by praying in tongues. And so why would we not want to utilize every possible means to strengthen ourselves in Christ so that we can continue to overcome, live in victory, and see Jesus get the glory that he deserves. So if you want that, I want to pray with you right now, because let me tell you, God will fill you with his spirit right here, right now, and the gift of tongues will come forth if you want it and if you believe. So for those that do, Let's pray. And I'm just going to have you repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit 
is for me as your word has said you said in your word that jesus will baptize us with his holy spirit so jesus i am asking you now baptize me with your holy spirit and with fire clothe me with power from on high and give me the gift of praying in tongues you are a good father and i know that you will not give me something else other than what i am asking for so by faith, as your child, I receive this gift now in Jesus' name. Now I want you to open your mouth and begin to make sounds. Don't try to form a language, just begin to talk. Put a voice in your mouth and you will see that God will begin to fill it with a language. And so begin now. Ararara shere rebe shoko raba shanda raba shede. Kore raba shanda raba sho. Kore raba shanda raba she. Kore raba shanda raba she. Kere rebe shoko. O raba ba shanga. Araba she. Kere rebe. Konda raba shondo robo sha. Araba sha. Kara ba sha. Kore raba shanda raba sha da. Konda raba shanda raba she do. Ere rebe sho. Kora ba shita. Araba she. Kere yando robo she. Oraba shonda raba she. Kere rebe shoko. Oraba sha. Kara ba she. Kere eshe ke. Arabashe, 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 Rorokor, Rabashanda, Rabashaba. Keep praying, keep praying. And if all you're hearing is one syllable or one sound over and over, do not get hung up on that. That is the language. Keep going and it will develop. Do not get caught up on what you're saying or how it sounds. The most important thing to do is just to keep praying and keep speaking. And as you continue to steward it and do, do it, it will develop and you will get to a point where you get in a flow and it will become something that will be a part of your life and it will change you forever. So be blessed in the name of Jesus and I will see you on the next one.